Okay, hi everyone. So the point of this video is I just want to take you through the brute force um, code that you had to write using this example to find the pins that are hidden behind these checksums. So these are encrypted checksums um, and basically when we spoke about um, rainbow tables and hackers being able to use a brute force algorithm to find a pin from a checksum so what we want to do is we want to find these four pins from these checksums um, in the instructions it says that the numbers going to be a pin from 0 to 9999 and hopefully if I help you with that so if I show you how this one will be solved then what you're going to do is hopefully finish the example I've given you where um, I have a hidden password where I've used two random words and the random number between 1 and 10 and if you remember I had an example of a password that was saved and that saved as a checksum and you would have to look at the words text and you'd have to brute force running through the uh, array of numbers here and combine um, the words together so one word with another word and the random number and see how long it would take for you to brute force and find the password that I've hidden um, in that checksum so that's for you to work out and I'm just going to take you through this example here and let's give that a go so we're going to take that and we'll dump it into Python here if I run that you can see what goes on here is using the message hello um, Python uses the hashlib library or hashlib and produces a checksum in hex form which produces uh, a hexadecimal array of numbers so let's take that and the first thing I'm going to do now that I've done that is I'm going to turn this into a function so I'm going to well before I do that I'll take the three hashes that I want to find the pins for and let's put that there so let's call that checksums equals let's make a list and we'll paste them in and the first one will be that there so my first one so I'm, I'm turning these into a string and let's do that again oh sorry let's get rid of the extra space there there we are so now I've got a list of free checksums so let's start by turning this into a function that we can keep calling because we're going to run a for loop to check through each one of these and through a loop of numbers as well so the first one is going to be let's say let's define it let's call it find pin find pin and we want to give it two arguments the first argument will be checksum and the second argument will be a number to test and turn into a checksum so just like in the example here the message is actually going to be my number so I'm going to say num is equal to a string uh, number the reason why we're going to turn it into a string is because Python is going to give us a random number or a number that counts up from 0 to 9999 and as you can see here the message is a string and the hashlib function requires a string to encode into a checksum so we need to stringify that we're going to cast it into a string first so once we've done that we'll produce a result and the result is going to be produced again with the same function so we'll borrow that oops and we'll paste that there and we'll just change message for num and then what we'll do is we will check if the result dot hex digest like that is equal to the num no sorry is equal to the number and then what we'll do is we'll just print out the number um, result hex digest so that would be 
no, that would be wrong, sorry. I need to check if it's the same as checksum. So the checksum here is going to be entered into the function, okay? Then a number is going to be entered into the function as well. We're going to turn the number into a string. We're going to turn that number into a checksum, or its own, a digest. And then we're going to check if the result from that is the same as the checksum that we've passed through. If it is, then it's going to print the number out. Okay, so now we've done that. The next thing to do is to create our loop. So we're going to say for i in range, or in fact, let's not do range. Let's say for i for checksum in checksums. So it's going to look for each item inside this list for checksum in checksums. Uh, and then we'll do another loop inside that. So we're going to say for each checksum, test it basically, you know, almost 10,000 times, 9,999. So we're going to say for i in range from 0 to 9999, um, we're going to say, um, uh, we're going to say find pin. So we'll call the function and we want to say checksum. So we want to pass the checksum in first. So the checksum is there. And then we also want to call i. And here we're not going to turn i into a string because i is turned into a string up the top here. So hopefully if I have to run that, before I do that, let me delete these lines here. We don't need these lines anymore. If I run it, I think I should get one result, and I do. So it's found one of the pins for me. So it's found that one of the pins from these three checksums is 3329. The reason why it's not found the other two is, let's say, for example, it's this one that's correct. The reason why it may not have found the other two is probably because they start with a zero. And the way this works is, um, you know, Python might pass zero first, but it can't pass through zero zero essentially and in, as an integer is still zero okay so what we need to do is we need to doctor that a little bit and get it to be able to pass through two zeros together or a, a three zero and a one together so what we're going to say is if length of we want to say length of i but i is an integer so a number is a length of one so we need to turn that into a string here as well so we're going to say if the length of i is a string um, is equal to 1 then what we'll do is we we'll use f strings we're going to say i equals um, f and we're going to say 0 0 0 and then i so now what will happen is if it's just a one digit number then it will add three zeros to the beginning and that's fine and we're going to need to do that three more times so let's paste that again and this time if the length is 2 it's going to add two zeros so we get rid of 1 um, and then that is going to have to be elif and we'll do that one more time so we'll say elif um, the length is 3 then we just want two zeros um, and I think that should be fine um, so yeah, that should be fine. And if it's not any of those things, then that means the length should be 4, so it won't run any of those, and it will just pass the 4-digit number there. So now what should happen, I believe, hopefully we're going to get 3 results. We, we've got 2 results. Why is that? Um, oh, because that should be a 0. I thought to take an extra 0 away. So that must mean one of the numbers has only got one zero in front. There we are. So now we've got the result of our three hashes, okay? Now, the thing about this is that this is not the most efficient way of working, okay? If we can make it a little bit tighter, a little bit better, we will. So what we're doing at this point is, um, in these ones, with these functions here, we are casting i as an integer. Um, where are we doing it? We're doing it here, it's a string. At this point, we're passing a string through because we're saying i is a string okay for each one of these so in that case why am i doing it here so if i get rid of that because i don't need to do that anymore at this point if i was to do this as well so if i was to add an else 
we're saying basically if it's four digits long then let's just say i is equal to string i so that should result in the same thing it does and that's good and that way i'm not going to have to cast it as a string for a second time for all the numbers they're all cast as a string just once now um, and what we could do to add to this is we could see how long the process is taking so like we said yeah uh, a cpu if it's three gigahertz or two gigahertz it can handle two billion cycles a second or instructions a second and if it was three gigahertz it can handle three billion instructions per second so with a powerful cpu finding out you know what a pin number is for a checksum like this is could be done in a matter of seconds or in a second all right um, and if I had for example um, for example the task that I'm going to give you I'm assuming it might take a little bit longer but generally it shouldn't take too long and it's something that you should all be able to solve you know, using this example but let's let's see if we can add some timing into that as well so we can see how long it's taking so what we're going to do is we're going to import oops we're going to import date time um, and then at the top here so before we start running our for loop we're going to say time one so we're going to take a timestamp and we're going to say date time dot date time dot now so this is going to record the time at, just before it starts to run the for loop and then what we'll do is if it finds the if it finds the result there so before it prints it out we'll say time two so we'll take another timestamp is equal to the same thing so let's copy that like that and now underneath we'll say time taken is equal to t2 minus t1 so we can see exactly how long it took and then in fact let's shorten that let's say time taken is tt just so it's a little easier to write and then we'll add an f string in here as well and we're going to say the pin let's make that smaller so it fits in the screen nicer the well, we got space the pin number is and then we'll add number um, time taken is time taken full stop so now that should um, for every single time it's found the pin it should tell us how long it took so if we run it again there we are um, and basically it's telling us that, that all collectively collectively to find all three together is taking less than a second or less than a fraction of a second so that should be um, for you that should be um, a nice solution for that problem and then using this idea should be able to help you as I said um, iterate through the list of words here and you're going to combine one word with another word and you're going to do that for every word and then you're also going to combine that with a number from 1 to 10 to see if you can find the hidden password which is a, saved as a checksum okay